E Shalom, I can Shalom, call hello, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem Kadash. I send double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to Yahweh. I'm out there pushing the word and sincerity and truth. This is Brother Ariala. And this is just a mindset lesson that I want to kind of go over. You know, this is something that we've talked about previously as far as the uh the I the idea of uh <laughs> having daddy issues, you know, you know, and the truth in. I wanted to kind of touch in on this concept as far as for Akiam to make sure we always want to check ourselves and make sure that we're in the right mindset and mind frame whenever we look towards, you know, how the spirit is moving, you know, in this truth. And one of the things that we have to be considerate of is, are we receptive to male authority, you know, or has the curses caused us to have a perspective that holds us back, you know? One of the things that happened because of the nation of Israel's rebellion is that the houses, our houses and our families were destroyed, you know, and that was very intentional. You know, the Most High set it up to where, you know, we basically uh, lost our land rights and basically the way that we are uh, uh, kind of like grown up, you know, in this world has been destroyed, man. The father is not in the house. The mothers are kind of running rampant. And so that leads to a rebellious nation that's broken. And it's kind of like a cycle of just judgment because of the way that we are uh, uh, raised in the mindset that we're in. And the most I said he'd do that if we were disobedient, you know. We didn't listen to the prophets. We didn't listen to the prophecies. We wanted to do what we wanted to do. We went and followed after the other nations. And so the security of, of, of home was absolutely decimated. And so I wanted to touch on this, on this mindset and how... Growing up fatherless and how that how that pl puts people in the mindset of rebellion. Now, just starting out, when you look here in the book of Jeremiah 18 and 18, it says, Then they said, Come, let us devise devices against Jeremiah, for the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the pro pro prophet. Come, and let us smite him with the tongue, and let us not give heed to any of his words. So this was the mindset that the nation of Israel had towards Jeremiah warning the people, you know, telling people, hey, you, you've you gone a whoring. The Most High is going to come with judgment. He's going to bring a nation upon you that you, you, you're you not going to be able to defeat. But our nation just wanted to do what they wanted to do, right? Verse 19 says, give heed to me, O Lord, and hearken to the voice of them that contend with me. Shall evil be recompensed for good? For they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them and to turn away thy wrath from them. Therefore, deliver up their children to the famine and pour out their blood by the force of the sword and let their wives be bereaved of their children and be widows and let their men be put to death. Let their young men be slain by the sword in battle. Let a cry be heard from their houses, when thou shalt bring a troop suddenly upon them, for they sh for they have digged a pit to take me, and hid snares for my feet. And so, you know, this is an example of what, when rebelliousness happens in the nation of Israel, the Most High will send judgment. Men going to be killed, the women will be bereaved, and what happens? You, you have these fatherless households start to be reared up, Right? In the book of Lamentations 5 and 1, it says, Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. We have drunken our water for money. Our wood is sold unto us. Our necks are under persecution. We labor. We have no rest. And this is what's happening in, in this current society, you know. And if everything is turned upside down and it's created a situation to where the houses are cursed and the, the discipline and the wisdom that you have in a household being taught by the father is not there. And so now coming back, we're we're reordering ourselves, you know, and so we have to have the mindset of, you know, humility and obedience and getting in line, so to speak. I see a lot of brothers struggle, struggle with male authority. You know what I mean? Struggle with understanding the purposeful order. Struggle with understanding the humility that it takes to come underneath a father. They're not used to the discipline. A lot of us were raised by our women. And so that sentimental mindset can be there when we need to man up. And so we have to check that if we have if we having those issues. We have those 
what, what we call daddy issues. You know, daddy issues can lead to uh, a heightened problem with except, and it can lead to be diso, dis, disobedience to Yahweh Shai. Because Yahweh Shai, is, he's going to have, he's, there's austere, hard, disciplined expectations that the Lord has of his men. And if we're not willing to go through what we call the straight gate and, and receive that discipline, then we'll fall out and we'll fall into rebellion. And this is what we see in a lot of households, right? When you read the book of Sirach 3 and uh, verse 6, it says, He that honoreth his father shall have a long life, and he that is obedient unto the Lord shall be a comfort to his mother, right? Not getting in trouble, just following the way, building a house. He that feareth the Lord will honor his father and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. Honor thy father and mother both in word and deed, that a blessing may come upon thee from them. For the blessing of the father establisheth the houses of children, but the curse of the mother rooted out foundation. Glory not in the dishonor of thy father, for thy father's dishonor is no glory unto thee. All right? And so we have to be mindful of that. We have to be mindful that we are getting back into that spirit of building up the household, building up um, and, and coming under the obedience of, of order and of, of fathers and in the sense of a father, not just, oh, I'm only going to listen to you. How about you? No, there's going to be, there's going to be an order in the situ in the situation. And, 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 you know, I was looking at this article right here. The removal of fathers out of the household creates huge psychological issues that can create a perpetual kind of cycle generation by generation. You know, and as we are coming reborn into this truth, this is something that this sentiment and mindset has to be washed away. Right now, it says on this uh, liveabout.com down in this article, it says why fathers matter. It says men and women are different and they parent in different ways. While the statistics examine the issue of children growing up without a father, it's important to look at what a father can bring to a child parent relationship. In a report done by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, these benefits are outlined in great detail. For instance, young boys who have a father figure are less likely to act out, and young girls are often more confident. A father can help establish a sense of security and guide children to make wiser decisions. The difference in parenting styles is distinct. Fathers communicate in a unique way. For example, while a mother will often simplify her language to a child's level, men tend to tell it like it is, with no change in vocabulary. Subconsciously, this can challenge kids to try and understand what they're being told, which can increase critical thinking skills and subsequently school and future work success. Basically, having common sense. Your dad is gonna speak to you in a way that is like, nigga, have some common sense. Use your head for more than a hat rack. He's not gonna dumb it down for you. He's gonna make you pick it up, you know? And in the spirit, we come into that sense when we have our elders, we have the apostles and, and, you know, men on down. We have to understand this. You know, discipline is another area where significant differences between mothers and fathers are seen. While mothers tend to be more sympathetic, fathers tend to be sterner. Fathers like to enforce the rules with an objective perspective. And, and this can instill in children a greater sense of right and wrong that can last a lifetime, right? And you know what the scriptures talk about in the book of, uh, of Wisdom of Solomon, the sixth chapter. The beginning of love is discipline. And that love leads into the following and keeping of the commandments, which leads to better decision making and, and ultimately leads to a kingdom. But it all starts with discipline. And that discipline at the forefront, forefront of that is learning that, that discipline and thinking and way of being t generally comes from the Father, man generally comes from the father but what has happened because of fathers that have been removed from the house you know rebelliousness and a sentiment and emotionalism has come to the forefront within our men and this is something that as we come, come into this truth and we build we have to make sure to put out of our spirit all right all right and so in the book of uh, isaiah 30 and uh nine it says that this is a rebellious people lying children Children that will not hear the law of the Lord, because that law of the Lord is going to do what? It, you got to be, you got to be disciplined, and our people are, are, are don't want to receive discipline, and that's why destruction has come. But now it's time to turn that upside down and come back into righteousness, right? 
Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 21, it says, How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. That wisdom that's, that, that generally comes from the from the Father is being has been removed from the house. And it's been very, very, very intentional. Very intentional. So we look into this article right here. Um, it says, The Negro Family, The Case for National Action. And uh, Brother Bakwasha sent this to me, but it made, it made a point about the, the intentional removal of fathers and husbands from the household. And, and this is a curse. This is a curse that you can read about in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. And it's led to just rebellion, absolute rebellion, you know, from 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 our people. You know, it says and, and it's just a part of us being cursed from our disobedience overall to the Heavenly Father. But anyway, it says the Negro family, a case for national action, commonly known as the uh, Moynihan Report, was a 1965 report on black poverty in the United States written by Daniel Petro Moynihan an American uh, sociologist serving as Assistant Secretary of Labor under President Lyndon B. Johnson. Uh, Moynihan argued that the rise of black single mother families was caused not by a lack of jobs, but by a destructive vein in ghetto culture, which could be traced to slavery uh, times and continued discrimination in the American South under Jim Crow. Black sociologist E. Franklin Frazier had introduced that idea in the 1930s, but Moynihan was considered one of the first academics to defy conventional social science wisdom about the structure of poverty. As he wrote later, the work began in the most orthodox setting, the U.S. Department of Labor, to establish at some level of statistical con uh, uh, conciseness to uh, what everyone knew. That economic conditions determine social conditions. Whereupon, it turned out that everyone, what everyone knew, was evidently not so. The report concluded that the high rate of families headed by single mothers would greatly hinder progress of blacks towards economic and political equality. The Moynihan report was criticized by liberals at the time of publication. And its uh, conclusions remain controversial. And you still have that liberal vein that want to tell you that uh, strong black mothers are raising up great households. And they still re uh, produce or they still create an environment where black women feel like they don't need men. By welfare, by, you know, government funding, by uh, uh, child support, and by giving women an out from um, marriage with divorce rights. It makes it where women feel like they don't need men, you know, and this creates a problem of more and more rebellion from the nuclear structure. And that mindset is permeated into everybody. It's even something that we have to make sure to break out from ourselves, because what happens is from popular culture, media, what we read about in school, what we're taught, you get a sense of rejection of black male authority or rejection of Israelite male authority. There's a vein of disrespect towards men that's generally pushed out there. And that leads to chaos. It leads to disorder. And we don't, we want to make sure we're not bringing that disorder into the ministry. When, 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 when camps are established, when order is established, when the way that we communicate and we work together, we need to make sure that we're not taking those sentiments and mindsets that's pushed out there to where we can't handle uh, discipline. We can't handle someone speaking straightforward. We, we we can't handle someone being stern. Any type of any type of stern talk, you, you know, uh, emotional response is, is is made. When 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 we see that the scriptures don't care about your emotions like that, the scriptures don't have to cater to your emotions to tell you something first. All right, that is that is a concept that's being permeated into our people. And it creates a mindset of rebelliousness. Okay? Now, when we go to the book of First Thessalonians, the second chapter, uh, in the ninth verse, it says, For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for labor and day and night, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of the Most High. 
ye are witnesses in the Most High also how uh, holy and justly and unblameable we behaved ourselves among you that believe. As ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children, that ye would walk worthy of the Most High, who have called you into his kingdom and glory. All right. But, you know, the exhortation, the comfort and being charged to do something is going to take a willingly uh, a mind of a humble mind of obedience as a child to a father. But if you can't be told nothing, and you know, nobody, you ain't going to let a man talk to you like that because you're not, you're not no man pleaser. And da, 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 then you're not going to be able to function within the body of the truth. If you're taking that single black mother mindset that's being that's being forced down everyone's throats, this truth that's being established is going to be an offense to you. That's a way that needs to be put off, because the fact of the matter is that the father is going to have is going to be sterner. Things are going to come in that way. When you go here to the book of Sirach, thirty and one, it says, "He that loveth his son causeth him off to feel the rod." that he may have joy of him in the end. He that chastiseth his son shall have joy in him and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy and before his friends he shall rejoice of him. Though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead for he have left one behind him that is like himself. While he lived, he saw and rejoiced in him, and when he died, he was not sorrowful. He left behind him an avenger against his enemy, enemies, and one that shall requite kindness to his friends. He that maketh too much of his son shall bind up his wounds, and his bowels will be troubled at every cry. So any you know, who that maketh too much of the son, you always coddling the, the boy. You want to make him feel good about everything, give him a trophy for everything that he does. You don't allow him to, to be, uh, scrape his knee and hurt himself, you know what I mean? In the end, he's going he's going to be troubled at every cry. All right? So you want to you want to you want to teach your son to be like unto yourself in a way of discipline, in a way of the mindset towards following the will of the heavenly Father. This is how these these things are being reestablished through the order of the apostles and the elders on down. And we are to be coming to that mindset. So it's going to be a time where it seems stern or disciplined or you being chastised, man. It's not for, for, for to hurt your feelings. It's to build you up. Okay? We have to understand this mindset, right? It says, And horse not broken becometh headstrong, and a child left to himself will be willful. And then we see these examples, and I like to use the example of this card because they're a great example of willful children. You know, children that 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 will refuse to be broken by discipline, and that that display heavy, heavy, heavy daddy issues, and and truly resent male authority. Even Yahweh Shah, they it's like there's they 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 don't even understand it because it's so deep, deeply psychologically rooted in themselves. They don't. They don't. They don't understand the disobedience that's locked inside of them, that rebellion that's locked inside of them, and it's played off as ghetto gangster, hard culture, but really it's a curse. It's a curse of lack of order. It's a. It, it's a. It's a curse of not respecting your father. Okay, and that's been groomed in our people generation by generation. Even within our family of Great Millstone, we want to make sure that we're we're not growing and having that sentiment within the camps and if you're finding yourselves having this issue with listening or being under other men then you really should check yourself in, in, in your perspective because the way of discipline and communication needs to be there to have a true established group and organization that's growing in the spirit and that's why i'm covering this right now okay now reading on down verse nine here it says, Cocker thy child. This is a Sirach 30 and 9. Cocker thy child, and he shall make thee afraid. All right? Play with him too much. Play with him, and he will bring thee, bring thee to heaviness. Laugh not with him, lest thou have sorrow with him, and lest thou gnash thy teeth in the end. And that don't mean you don't laugh with your son. It means you're not goofy all the time with your son. He's not your friend. Your son is not your friend. 
And when we look, even when we look into our apostles and elders and we start to have this too friendly of a relationship, then, then, then that's where disobedience comes. Verse 11 says, give, give him no liberty in his youth and wink not at his follies. You don't wink at the little stuff he does and you see it as a problem. You handle it. You don't give him no whole bunch of, you know, you, 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 you discipline your son. Verse 12 says, bow down his neck while he is young. And beat him on the sides while he is a child, lest he wax stubborn and be disobedient unto thee and bring sorrow to thine heart. Chastise thy son and hold him to labor, lest his lewd behavior be an offense unto thee. All right. And so this is the mindset that, we, you know, that we were, we're gaining and we're understanding even in the structure of this truth. First Timothy 5 and 1 says, Re rebuke not an elder. But entreat him as a father and the younger men as brethren, okay? The elder women as mothers and the youngers and the younger as sisters with all purity, okay? So this is the mindset that, we, that we're, we're coming to have within the households, okay? You entreat your elders as fathers. You entreat them as people that come before you and are passing down legacy unto you. You honor that. You honor that with obedient, humble behavior. This leads to continuity. Continuity. Okay? I'm going to get that word at the end of this. Okay? Proverbs 3 and 11 says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be wary of his correction. For who, whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. And the beginning of getting that wisdom and understanding is going to be what? Discipline. It's going to be discipline. So this is what's being established here in this household, in this spiritual house. You have fathers, mothers, brothers, and sisters. Right now, the focus is on the fathers and the sons being established. Why? Because that's where the legacy begins. So as, as young men coming up into this thing, we need to make sure that we have that mindset and we have that understanding. Okay? So, you know, as we uh as we continue, I want to grab something real quick. Right. And so you look up this word continuity. It says the unbroken and consistent existence or operation of something over a period of time. We want unbroken and consistent operation of what this ministry we have to have and we have to have unbroken uh, kind of like a cohesiveness all right two it says the maintenance of continuous action and self-consistent detail in various scenes of a movie or broadcast and what are we doing we're broadcasting we're publishing the truth the gospel it's, it's we have a continuity and that means all the parts have to work together well and we are all bricks and pieces of this household, of this temple. So we have to understand where we are. We have to understand we're, we're becoming new into this thing. Too. We're reborn in this thing. Put off the old man. All right? Us that, that we can't allow emotionalism, daddy issues, and being raised by our mothers to hinder us from receiving correction, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and for us to understand our duty in this thing. Okay? So I just wanted to highlight that because th that is a little bit of something that's been seen uh, lately. And uh, I wanted to put that out there. But, you know, definitely on the comment boards, if, uh, bros have uh, points and everything like that, please post your scriptures and your points down in the comment board below. Lord willing, this was edifying. Call hello, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Bahashim, Rakah Hodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you, Akiam. And, and uh, out there pushing the word sincerity and truth. Shalom.